Let's go. This is TJ Murphy and welcome to another episode of Adventurous Entrepreneurs. My guest today is Javon Wooden. Javon is a dynamic business coach, speaker, author, U.S. Army Reserve veteran, and Bronze Star Medal recipient who is passionate about helping motivated individuals and businesses achieve their goals. He earned his master's degree in cybersecurity from Fordham University and his MBA from the Robert H. Smith School of Business at the University of Maryland. Drawing on his 12 years of experience in the military, to hone his expertise in all aspects of leadership and peak performance under the highest possible stakes. Wooden's remarkable business growth and personal development ideas have been featured in top publications such as Entrepreneur, Fast Company, Founder, Forbes, and Verizon. Just a few of the golden takeaways Javon shares in this episode are tips on mental health for entrepreneurs, why authenticity is your number one unique selling point, and how to make friends with the competition and win big in business. So without further ado, this is Javon Wooden and me. Welcome to the Adventurous Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, TJ Murphy. Since quitting my corporate nine to five and starting a business while backpacking through Asia back in early 2017, I've had the privilege of learning from some incredibly adventurous entrepreneurs. Through these conversations and my own journey, I've learned that much like in life, entrepreneurship is an adventure. On this podcast, I explore the journeys of top performing leaders in their fields. These wide ranging conversations include tactical business advice, how I built this insights, lessons in leadership, life hacks, travel stories, favorite hobbies, and insights into living a purposeful and joy-filled life. Adventures await us, so let's dive in. Hey, hey, Javon, welcome to Adventurous Entrepreneurs, man. Hey, TJ, thanks for having me, man. I'm excited for the conversation. Likewise, my friend, likewise. It's great to have you on the show. I had a Last joining you earlier this week on the Design Your <laughs> Life and Business podcast, which for everybody listening you should definitely go check it out. It's all about designing your business around the life you want to live here and now, which for me, that's like priority number one. So I'm excited to turn the mic around and, and dive into your journey, my man. So let's start there. Can you tell us a little bit about your story leading up to you becoming the adventurous entrepreneur you are today? Absolutely, man. Yeah. Just similar to the conversation we had, we flipped the mic. Um, so, I'm similar to you, man. I love to travel. Um, I'm all about creating experiences. And I always knew that my personality just wasn't meant to work for someone else. Um, and it wasn't meant to be in the corporate world because I feel like my passion is helping others. Right. And I was an IT. That was my foundation, IT and business. And, you know, working in the IT world, I was like, what am I really doing here? Like I'm protecting the company's asset, being a cybersecurity specialist, but I don't feel like it's driving a purpose. So founded my coaching business, Live Not Loathe, uh, started the podcast, Design Life and Business, and, you know, have been rolling from there, man. Love it, man. So let's bring things forward to just that, what you're focused on here today. Tell me about Live Not Loathe. What, what's got your focus right now here in April of 2023? Yeah, so what I'm focused on now is um, really building community. Um, I just started a membership program with the same name, Design Your Life and Business uh, Club. And it's really about creating a, a membership. This year, I want to hit about 150 service-based entrepreneurs, um, people who really have a purpose, people who may not be doing the best on taking care of themselves. So it really covers personal and professional development because we know if we really want to create that financial foundation for the future, we have to have longevity ourselves. Totally, man. That self-care, being able to relax, recharge, do the things that bring you joy, it's its mission critical. And Absolutely. one of the things I, I admire about you is that you show up as your authentic self on social media, in your podcasts, in a couple of one-on-one -on -one conversations we've had. I, I think it's key when it comes to building your brand to really show up and that really will help anybody develop their flow when it comes to sales, marketing, attracting the right people. So I'm curious, can you share how authenticity has really helped you grow and, and develop your unique value in the market you're in? Absolutely, man. And I appreciate you saying that, TJ. I personally feel like authenticity is the number one unique selling point, especially if you're a personal brand, right? And yeah. personal brand isn't only just having your name as your brand, right? It's it's also, you know, if you're the CEO, if you're a leader, you represent whatever company you are trying to uh, grow, 
right? So I feel like authenticity just really allows people to get to know you, like you, and trust you, as we always talk about. But it also gets to resonate with who you want to communicate with, right? If I was out here sounding like everyone else, I wouldn't be reaching the people I wanted to reach, right? Maybe you wouldn't even want to come on my podcast because you're like, oh, this guy sounds cheesy, right? So yeah. being your authentic self, really, it's easier. <laughs> it's easier, yeah. right? I don't Once have to put on out. this facade. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I can just come out here and sound like me, um, you know, whether I'm having a good day or bad day, right? You know what you're going to get. You know, I'm going to bring this type of energy and you know, I'm going to make sure I play full out. Yeah, man. I mean, it's so easy to you know, compare ourselves to, to other entrepreneurs, people who's maybe like 10, 20, 30 chapters ahead of us. And we think we right. need to be there today. And, you know, I've fell into this trap of trying to be someone I wasn't trying to play someone else's game and quickly learn that when you're trying to play someone else's game, I mean, they're going to be better at it. A, eh? and you're not going <laughs> to feel good about it. People are going to smell that a mile away. You're going to come off as inauthentic. So yeah, as as you said, it, it's so critical to find that flow. And once you do, it is much easier to be truly authentic. So Absolutely. this podcast is, is all about entrepreneurship, obviously, but one of the biggest hurdles and something that we both share in terms of a theme in our podcast is that most successful entrepreneurs are struggling at one time or another with living a well-rounded life and doing the things that that bring us joy with the people that we care about most. So I'm curious, like, what does that look like for you? What does living a well-rounded life look like? Absolutely, man. I love adventure. That's why I wanted to come on here, man, because I, I think that memories means well-rounded, right? And when you create memories for me, it's traveling, it's experiencing different food, spending time with family and friends. My lady, you know, we we love to do things together. We're similar to you and your wife. Oh, right? man, for sure. Make sure we have date night each week. Uh, and date night could be as simple as cooking a meal together, you know, or it could be, you know, going out. So for me, a well-rounded life is really about creating the moments and remembering my why. Why did I even want to start a company? Why do I work, right? And that money is not the reason. It's really to be able to afford this type of lifestyle where I can, you know, take a break. I can play a uh, hooky for a little bit and go to the park or something like that or and work from anywhere. That to me yeah. is well rounded. Yeah, man. I mean, money... I don't think can buy happiness, but it certainly can buy freedom in a lot of ways. Yes. So that's, that's my <laughs> yeah. pursuit. Absolutely. And, it gives you the things that can make you smile exactly, a little bit, right? Exactly. Exactly. And you know, one of the things you asked me on your podcast, which I liked was how, you know, I handle adversity and then the daily grind and, and how ultimately I've been able to develop a life and business that I don't need a vacation from. Although I love taking those vacations, but I'd love Absolutely. to hear how you how you would feel that question and, and have been able to do just that with your business. I love that, TJ. Um, so for me, you know, it starts with the mindset first. Um, I, I play from a mindset of gratitude and abundance. So, um, you know, how I designed the life and business I don't need a vacation from was first addressing those things that was causing me misery and pain, right? Realizing that I am human realizing that um, I actually suffer from mental health issues, right? So mm -hmm. I had to first get that help. That was one step in designing that life. Um, two, pr providing my 360 degree support system, letting people know what support I needed, letting people know when I didn't feel right um, so I can get that. And then the third thing was identifying my purpose and sticking with it, right? Really that purpose is how I reverse engineer all of my goals, is how I know exactly what I'm going to do is how I know when I'm in alignment. Um, and I always talk about the triad, right? Physically, mentally, spiritually, I make yeah. sure I'm aligned. So I'll stay to take a step back if I need to, you know, and go into my Zen state and go, you know, spend some time, do what I need to do so I can come back and, and fully pour into whatever I need to pour into. I never pour from an empty cup. Can't, that's my, can't that's do my it. strategy. <laughs> you can't, can. you can't. And mental health, as you, I mean, in my opinion, is the biggest threat to to any entrepreneur's journey, to anybody's journey, ultimately. Absolutely. And, and you mentioned that you've had your battles over the years. Would you mind talking a little bit about that? Absolutely, man. So, um, I, you know, in the Black community, we didn't really talk about that growing up. Um, it's becoming more, more of a conversation these days, but it used to be taboo. Um, and going through the military, you know, I always felt kind of weird at times, you know, like sometimes I felt detached and stuff. I just thought it was a part of the game. But it wasn't until 2017, I returned home from my last deployment to Afghanistan. 
And there was a, a bombing there that just really, I didn't realize how it affected me. So I come home, I go to Bali and Thailand for my, my break, for my um, R&R before yeah. I get back to life. And I get home and I'm like, man, I just really don't enjoy any of this. <laughs> this sucks, right? I, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to talk to anyone. And I was just really recluse, which isn't like me. So one day I called my oldest sister, Chandra, and I told her, like, you know, I don't, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. I think either I'm going to go back overseas to see if I can find a contract position or I'm just going to, to end it. And she was like, no, you're going to do, she said two words, you're going to get help. And that was like so freeing for me, man. Because I had never, as a as the man of the family, I had never even thought about how I needed help, right? Um, so that's when I was officially diagnosed with uh, PTSD and severe depression. But being diagnosed meant I can do something about it, right? Putting those, sometimes I talk about labels often, and those labels to me were freeing because I, I had a description and I knew what what the signals were and I knew what some of the triggers were. So I was able to, you know, form a plan and be proactive with my health versus being reactive because a lot of it is really you not understanding cognitively what's going on, right? It's just a, a knee jerk thing. And then you realize, you know, you, you did something. So um, now that I, I know that it's severe depression and PTSD, I've created a way to make sure that when I'm feeling it, I kind of can calm myself down a bit. I have strategies. And that's really what it's all about when it comes to that mental health. Man. I'm curious, do you have any advice that you would you would give to other entrepreneurs who may be struggling with their mental health in terms of seeking out that help? And, and how do you view the role of support systems and, and self-care, those strategies, and ultimately identifying and, and overcoming it when it does pop up? Absolutely, man. And that's a great question. I'm glad we're talking about that. The first thing is, uh, it starts with you, right? You can't put the onus on anyone else because if you never speak with them, they can't support you, right? So one, you have to be willing to say, hey, I need to be vulnerable enough to get the proper care that I need. So then you can go get the professional help. You can go talk to someone um, if you need medication or maybe you can do holistic uh, practices. You find out what works best for you. And, and then you also have to realize it may not be that first person you go to that's going to find the solution for you. So try a couple of different things, right? There's a, a dozens of different types of therapy. Um, for me, it was EMDR that helped me. Um, and so you just have to find out what works, be willing to try new things, kind of like entrepreneurship, right? Yeah. And then you got to pivot, <laughs> yeah, you gotta gotta pivot, pivot when it. you need to. Absolutely. And then yeah. with support, just let them know how they can support you, right? Tell them what you need in those moments, you know, and they'll be really supportive for me. You know, I had to open up to my family and let them know like, Hey, I'm not Superman. Right. Um, yeah. I have some issues. And once I told them that it was like, man, you know, you never told us anything but good stuff. And then we, we always wonder why I wondered if you were okay. So I said, yeah, mm -hmm. well, now I'm going to start telling them. Um, and that's been great. So now they call and check up on me from time to time. And it, it just makes you feel much better when you know that you can depend on those people. Because a lot of us, we're blaming the other people, but we realize we never held ourselves accountable for why they aren't there when we need them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so many good points there. But just the fact that therapy and, and finding the solutions is not a one size fits all. You've got to be willing to well, first ask for help, which that's a superpower in and of itself. It takes Absolutely. far more strength to ask for help than to bottle it up and, and stay quiet. But then, yeah, as you said, just pivoting. You may you may not find the per perfect therapist or the perfect strategy the very first time. And it's okay to you know move on once you've given it you know, the due diligence it deserves. So man, I appreciate sure. you appreciate you open up about that. It's, it's, of course, something that's stigmatized in so many communities, but certainly in kind of the hustle culture and, and entrepreneurial world. It's something that we're starting to see more, more and more people talk about, which is refreshing. And, and it's something that I think we should all continue to shed some more light on. Is there anything that you see that you know, you think should get changed or anything that you would like to see change in the entrepreneurial community when it comes to supporting mental health and, and well-being in general? Absolutely. Well, one, I would like to see the healthcare. You know, I wish we yeah. could do something more about that, right? <laughs> one, oh, man. you know, you, you would think that that would be be like easy, right? The healthcare yeah, right? needs to change. Um, I'm also, I'm actually a member of the National Small Business Association. And that's been one of the things we've, we've been attacking most in, in DC is that, the healthcare reform for 
entrepreneurs and business owners. Um, but the second thing is really that hustle, hustle culture, man. Um, yeah. Just we always talk about, hey, you got to put it in, wake up at four and stop at 11 and all this other stuff. And we never talk about how the rest is just as important as the work. Um, and I think I want that conversation to really start taking form and start taking shape and really prioritization. You know, remembering again why we started in the first place, because if the entrepreneurial journey is taking us away from that and it's damaging those relationships we wanted to create or that lifestyle, then we really have to reevaluate some things. Right. It may not be stopping entrepreneurship or your dream altogether, but maybe you need to change how you're doing some things again. Maybe you need help. So I really want that collaborative mindset to become because that's going to help you get the help. I want us to start reaching out to people and not always looking at everyone as competition, because yeah. when you do that, it allows you to learn. You know, I can look at a competitor, so to speak, and learn how they're doing some things well. Maybe even reach out and say, you know what? I serve this demographic. You serve this demographic. Maybe we can develop a partnership or referral system, right? So there's so many opportunities. We have to really remember that success is not a finite resource, right? It is what we want it to be. Yeah, no, absolutely. I love the, the competition piece. Like I'm of the mentality that there is plenty of business to go around out there in the world and people are going to work with the people that are the right fit that they like mm -hmm. that they know that they trust and so i'm always trying to talk to my competitors whether that's local marketing agencies or just other people in the space because we have so much to share and you know not everybody is the right fit for me or or, or vice versa and so being able to have those partnerships and share knowledge, share resources, share referrals when, when they come up, I think it's far better to play nice with your enemies, your competitors mm -hmm. than to just like build a wall and, and not even yes. talk to each other. So certainly an opportunity there and just the hustle culture piece, man. I'm again, like it's not a one size fits all for some people that grind, grind, grind 60, 80 hour weeks that, that does bring them a level of satisfaction and that's okay. But, you know, if you're someone who wants to focus on the here and now and wants to design their business around a life that brings them joy here and now, it's okay to not strive to just grind it out until you're, you know, dead be tired every right. single day and not having any time to spend with your family, bringing your leftovers to your family, not having that full energy to be present and, and give your best to them. That's in my book, that's not living your best life. So For sure. knowing that if you see people that are on the grind, that's okay. That's, that's their journey, but you can build a business that brings you success and financial stability and freedom while still enjoying the here and now. Yeah. And sometimes you just got to do what I like to call the root cause analysis, right? It's like, you know, why do you want to grind like that? Are you running from something or to something? And that's the question you just have to ask yourself to keep it real. Like, you know, if I'm grinding all the all this time and, you know, there's actually a law of diminishing returns when you hit, no matter who you are. Right. For so sure. you got to ask yourself, you know, what am I doing this for? Why do I want to work 60, 80 hour weeks when I can go ahead and work less and smarter? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and still probably generate, if not more money, you know, the same, if not more money. Yep. Got to learn to delegate. And I just, I know like the diminishing returns piece by the time five o'clock rolls around. I mean, my productivity and my attention is a <laughs> fraction of what it is at the beginning of the day. So everything that I'm doing is like just taking 10 X more time and energy. And it's, it's better to just stop and, and come yes. back to it the next day, or at least take a break, go have dinner with the wife, do some fun with friends. And if it is like, a deadline or something I need to get done can always come back and put in those extra hours when I need to. But right. Do you have any, so on the adventure piece, like you love to travel, you love to get out there, get after it. Do you have any like rules or habits or practices that, that you or you and your wife use that enable you to create more adventure in your life and kind of have that built into your schedule? 
Yeah, man. One thing we like to, you know, do what the locals do, so to speak, when we yeah. travel, you know, sometimes that's not possible depending on where we are. But, you know, I want to eat like the locals. I want to stay, you know, if possible. When instead of staying in a hotel or resort, we want to stay where we can, like amongst them um, yeah. and just find like those off the beaten path things. Right. Not always going to the, the top tourist destinations and stuff like that. That's one. And then the, the other thing is, you know, not being so inundated. Right. We still have our phones. You can talk globally these days, you know, being really mindful about disconnecting when we can. Of course, we're going to take some photos and all that stuff, but we're not, you know, accepting business calls and all that stuff when we're there, right? I'm putting that out of office on as much as I can, right? Um, and then the third thing is just being in the moment, right? Just being present, like not always recording. Like sometimes if I want to just look at a sunset, right? Not pulling mm -hmm. out that device and just taking it all in, you know, recharging, close my eyes, and just being thankful sometimes, you know, and just spending that time feeling the breeze or, you know, enjoying the hike, whatever the case may be. But I feel like when we when you travel, that's the real important part, right? Being present, not yeah. just going there because someone said it was cool, but getting your own experience. Man, <laughs> we are so similar. We would travel well together <laughs> because those are yeah. all rules that, that, that we apply to my wife and I, especially like trying to get off the beaten path and and like staying at a homestay and just fi finding the restaurants where all the locals are eating and there's not a single tourist there. And maybe <laughs> exactly. they don't even speak English and we got to go in and just like point, like I want whatever he's having like right there. Yes. That, looks, that looks good. <laughs> and man, when you do that, the experiences that, that come at you, like you will never find those types of experiences unless you, you just do what others are not doing. And 100 percent that's the, that's the adventure piece for me man so i love it and hey, we might have to make that happen brother <laughs> oh I'm, I'm already sold i'm already sold man so one of the things that i always like to to dive into is that in every part of entrepreneurship you know it's an adventure it's a journey and and in every great adventure story there's a guide or or a mentor someone who leads the hero down the path to ultimately reaching their goal are there any influential people, mentors, coaches that come to mind in your life that have really helped shape you and, and gotten you to where you are today? Yeah, you know, a lot of my mentors are what I call the virtual mentors, right? I may yeah. not know yeah. them, but I've just seen them and they've inspired me in some way, shape or form, man. You know, that could be Martin Luther King. It could be, you know, Barack Obama. It could be anyone that's done something amazing. Steve Jobs, right? Those are people I've looked at and said, you know what? They failed many times, but they never gave up and they reached what I consider the pinnacle of success in their own right, in their own way. And they did it authentically. Um, so those are the people that I look at along the journey. Of course, I've had a ton of help. Um, I've had people who just, you know, really believed in me. And at times, even when I didn't believe in myself, uh, one of the guys that really took a chance on me when I entered the, the IT space uh, was his name was Russ Bynes. He was a cybersecurity expert pioneer uh and i took a job at a company called consumer reports he was the first person to give oh, yeah. me a cybersecurity job man so i'm always thankful to him and then um you know just all everyone all of my clients who has said you know what javon i, I want you to be a part of my journey i'm thankful for them too 100 percent, man they're a part of the story for sure. i love it what is like one of the best or most worthwhile investments that you've made in yourself? Could be an investment of money, time, energy, anything come to mind? Yeah. Well, every moment I do this, every moment I, yeah. I spend, <laughs> you know, doing this, this entrepreneurial thing, like really that, that time when I say, you know what, I'm going and I'm stepping out and I'm going to believe in myself. That is my favorite moment right? That's what I go back to, even when it's the hardest, when I'm like, man, it might be easier to just get a job. <laughs> you know? yeah. I still say like, that is my favorite thing. Just Napoleon Hill talks about burning those bridges, right? And that's the way you truly are. You're going to reach where you want to go. Um, and he was right. He was right. And I, so burning that bridge was my, my favorite moment. Yeah. I love that, man. Yeah. Especially like for me doing something like this, a podcast interview, whether I, when I started my podcast or when I was getting on podcast for the first time, man, I was so nervous about it. I was always so uncomfortable. And it's just one of those things that I told myself, I'm just going to keep doing it because every time I do it, I'm going to get better. I'm going to get more comfortable. People are going to see that, you know, discomfort at times. And that's mm -hmm. something that other people can look 
and admire and learn from in their journey to, to step out, whether it's public speaking or putting out content, whatever the case may be. Like, I just want to be that, that guiding light for others to say, yeah, it's, it's not easy in the beginning. It might be uncomfortable, but if you continue to do it, you're going to continue to get better. And that's going to open up opportunities for you down the line. So absolutely, absolutely, man. And you look at you now, right? You're calm, composed, you're killing it, man. Um, and things are, you know, that's how it works. You know, as you learn OJT, man, under job training, it's the best yeah. way, especially in an entrepreneurial journey for us to learn. Like we could take all the courses and get all the coaches, but ultimately it's up to us. You know, we got to learn these lessons as we go and really apply them. And, you know, you're the master at that clearly because you, you know, you're super composed. You're great at what you're doing, man. Oh, I appreciate that, man. So as I alluded to, as we kind of wrap things up here, I have a choose your own a choose your own adventure question for you. So you can <laughs> you can take it any way you like, or or answer both if you so desire. But the first would be, what's your favorite place you visited in the last few years? And second to that, maybe what's a recent adventure that you went on with with your wife? And in either case, what was it like? What made it so memorable? What was it like a favorite meal or, or drink you had or a lesson that you learned along the way? Give us give us a story. Yeah. Um, my favorite place that I've ever visited, it may be, it's probably Bali. Um, I really enjoyed Bali, man. That was that was the first destination I went to after Afghanistan. And it was just so peaceful. The people were so nice. Uh, they had a ton of celebrations going on. Watched a couple of the, the cultural shows, went to some of the temples, man. Um, and I had a guy uh, his, and he just took me everywhere and just showed me so much of the country. Uh, and I don't even know what some of the food was called, but it was amazing, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah. A lot of a lot of Nazi garang, me garang. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> it was yeah. amazing, man. And then uh, with with my lady, I think the she just recently took me to Turks and Caicos for my birthday, uh, and that meant a lot to me. You know, yeah, she she just surprised me with the trip. She uh, pulled out like postcards. Each day was a different letter, and I had to try to guess where we were going. It was really cool, man. So, so yeah, that was awesome. Dude, talk about memories. That's that's awesome. Bali was the first stop on on our big adventure when we quit our corporate nine to fives and and bought one way tickets to Asia. We were in Bali for the first month, and same deal, man. Wow. It just it opened my eyes to like what I'd been what I'd been missing because I didn't travel internationally um, yeah. hardly at all before that, and it just fueled the the desire to continue exploring life one adventure at a time. So absolutely great, great stories i, I want to do one of those uh asia circuits myself that's that's on the list yeah man it's a great place i mean just the people are incredible the food is incredible the things you'll see the cultural experiences it's it's one of a kind for sure so i agree javon what what ask challenge or or parting advice do you have for anyone listening before we wrap things up yeah, I want to go along the lines of collaborating, man. My challenge to all the listeners is to find someone that you looked at as a competitor and collaborate with them in some way, right? Just reach out, tell them how you can serve and, and see what comes of it. You'll be surprised. It's great advice. I'm going to do that myself. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, where can people find you online? Websites, socials, podcasts, all that stuff. Absolutely. Go to livenotloathe.com. That's L-I-V-E-N-O-T-L-O-A-T-H-E.com. And you can find me on social media at Live Not Loathe. Awesome, man. We'll put links to everything in the show notes. And just want to say, I appreciate this, man. This was a great conversation. We definitely should uh, keep in touch and plan a trip because I think we could have some amazing adventures together. Man, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm, I'm serious, man. I would love to do that. Awesome, man. We'll make it happen. All right, man. Thank you. you. Appreciate you. Peace. To all of our adventurous listeners, thank you for tuning in to today's episode. Please be sure to subscribe, download, and share this on social media or with someone you know will get some value from it. Leaving a review goes a long way in helping people find the show. And I personally appreciate reading them when they come in. So please go drop one if you have the time. We'll see you all next week. And remember... Whether we're talking about business or the things that bring us joy outside of work, life is meant for exploring. So go out there and live it one adventure at a time.